Oh my gosh, look at your names. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at your names. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you why I called you. Um, first of all, let's start with, you're not allowed to say no. So we'll just, no. <laughs> now you can't say no already. Um, look, man, I don't want to get too far into your personal stuff, but I, I know y'all got hit with a hurricane and kind of, y'all lost everything, right? So here's what I was thinking. Uh, I want to do something for the girls. You know I run the other woodworking business. So I was thinking of just doing something nice for them. I don't want you to tell your wife, like I want it to be a surprise to her, um, but definitely to your daughters. I, I Just something. I was thinking about doing a toy chest for each of them and uh, just, no, no, you're not gonna pay for it. No, it, my business just donated, like I already had the material. Um, I'm gonna start working on it and I was thinking just doing a nice wood chest for each of the girls and trying to get it done, you know, by Christmas. That, there's no promise on that right now, um, but trying to get it done for them. I don't wanna get spelling wrong. So <laughs> text me the girl's name so I have the spelling correct. And uh, like I said, do your, do your little bit of research, figure out what color they like, and we will go from there, man. Awesome, buddy. I'll be in touch. Yep, thank you. All right, yeah, you too. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just got off phone with David, obviously. Um, it is the 15th, yeah, Thursday the 15th. So, we got some work to do. We ended up using about 60 board feet of 10 quarter American black walnut. If you don't know what any of that means, it's just a really fancy way of saying we spent a lot of money on a lot of wood. In the beginning of this video, you saw me use the bandsaw to cut all these boards in half. Basically, you start with a thick board, like 10 quarter, you cut it in half vertically, and the two faces now create a mirror image of one another. This is known as book matching, and while it is time consuming, I think the end result is well worth it. Once we're finished book matching at the bandsaw, we plane all our boards to the same thickness, and then we can start our normal glue up process. I start with the biscuit joiner. It's not necessary, but it does help with alignment. If I had a 20 inch wide planer, I probably would skip this step and just run that whole panel through the planer. But I don't own a 20 inch planer, and because you're watching this video, you probably don't either. For those of you still wondering what book matching is, when I glue these two panels together, you're going to see how both boards have a mirror image of one another. It's a perfect representation and this is what I was going for on the lid, the front, and the sides of both of these chests. In the beginning I used Total Boat Epoxy along with Black Diamond Pigment to fill all these cracks and knot holes in the material. Uh, after that there's still some small cracks that I missed and some pin nail size holes in the epoxy itself. For the smaller cracks I went with the Starbond Thin to fill those and then for the small holes inside of the epoxy I used the Starbond Medium Thick Black. This is a perfect application for the CA glue. I can fill these small holes, spray with the activator, and sand it off almost immediately after. I go through this process on every panel, sanding to 80 grit, and then starting to cut my boards to dimension at the table saw. One thing of annoyance with book matching, if you're going to do it, you do have to remove equal parts on each side or the faces will no longer look the same. Ooh, time for an unboxing video. Since it's Christmas, my wife decided to buy me a gift. Now that's either true, or I get to find out if my own wife watches my videos. Either way, this is the Traxel Square from TSO Products, model number GRS-16PEK. Thanks, TSO. You literally could have called that anything else. As the name implies, this is for squaring up your pieces, and it's really accurate. Before, I would just take a T-square and butt it up against my track, and this is far superior. You're about to see a whole new level of excitement. Yep, there it was. Now, some of you may have missed it, but I am actually ecstatic. 
something I'm not ecstatic about is cutting these boards to final length. If you remember, we put biscuits in all these pieces. And if you're a good woodworker, you remember where you put the biscuits. And if you're like me, you tend to forget. If you haven't seen it yet, after this video, go check out this build I did for the router table I'm using now. The dust collection on it is phenomenal. Some of you may be wondering, who the heck is this guy David and why am I doing all this? Basically, I met David, his wife, and their two daughters through a close friend of mine at a UCF football game. And shortly after, this happened. It's hell on earth as Hurricane Ian slams into Florida. 155 miles per hour winds, 18 foot waves, epic destruction. From my understanding, these photos were taken after flooding had went down by several feet and David was able to return to his home to start trying to salvage anything he could. Originally, I called David to find out if there's any furniture that I could rebuild and replace for the rental home he's staying in. And he told me friends and family had donated everything, which is incredibly fortunate. During our conversation, I found out his wife's grandfather had built her a wooden chest and that's one of the things that was destroyed in this flooding. This really resonated with me and I wanted to do something for his twin daughters that they could hold on to forever. Okay, sliding dovetail time. I start with a white side router bit, quarter inch spiral down cut bit. This is gonna leave you a really clean edge as opposed to an up cut bit. I use it to create a channel and remove the bulk of the waste before coming back in with my half inch dovetail bit in the router. I was genuinely nervous about making these cuts. I told my wife if she hears yelling, I'm physically okay, mentally, not so much. Come on. I wish I was acting. I had to psych myself up to make these cuts. There's nothing like working on deadline when you literally cannot make mistakes. So basically, this is what we did. We're using three quarter of an inch wide dovetails and we only have a half inch wide dovetail bit. So we use the spiral down cut bit to cut a channel in all of the pieces. Then we came back, used the smaller spacer to cut the first pass with the half inch dovetail bit and then set up the second spacer, which is a quarter of an inch longer, giving us our second pass at three quarters of an inch. Coincidentally enough, a battery dying feels exactly the same as a router dying. Once all the dovetails are cut, it's time to do a mock assembly of both chests and then we need to cut in a rabbit for the base of our chest. Once the boxes are assembled, I'm going to use my handheld router and a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit to just run around the perimeter of the bottom of these chests. Now I knew that the sides alone would be too narrow and the router would be tippy. So I'm creating a temporary jig to go around and just give me a little more surface area for that router base to rest on. If I was only gonna do one pass, it would probably be okay. But because I'm doing two passes to create a full three quarter inch depth, the jig was necessary. If you struggle to get a perfectly square piece, pay attention. I start with a track saw and cut a parallel edge. I then use my TSO square to get a perfect 90 degree corner. We go to the table saw, 
I cut the edges parallel, but I do this oversized so I can flip the board again and remove that track saw edge to cut it with my table saw at final dimension. One of the most important things I learned in woodworking is anytime I'm gonna do more than two of anything, I make a jig. It takes a few after moments, but the amount of time it saves in the long run is priceless. So this template is for the base of the box. It allows me to run a flush trim router bit, cut all my corners, and then you'll see how flawless of a fit I end up getting. For the hardware on this lid, I went with Rockler torsion hinges. I have not worked with these before, but their site made it really easy to figure out what size I need. They are pricey for sure, but I think they're well worth it in the end, especially the first thing these little girls do is lift the lid and to not have that closed down immediately on their fingers is well worth it. So this is the part in the video where I have to pretend to be a real woodworker and we pulled out the chisel. These torsion hinges by Rockler are designed for a three quarter of an inch thick material and our material we ended up planing down to about seven eighths of an inch. And I'll be the first to admit, I am not perfect when it comes to chisel work, but there is a solution I show here with blue painter's tape to make a micro adjustment for the hinges if they don't fit correctly. I had watched my fair share of tutorials on how to install these engines and decided the easiest way is just leave the base off to install them and that was able to give me the most accurate marks. I have to say, one of my favorite things about woodworking is how easily the initial assembly goes together and how easily disassembly goes, only to have sheer and utter chaos during final assembly. If you find yourself getting a lot of tear out when you run a round over bit, Try running parallel to the grain first on both sides and then come back and run perpendicular to the grain. That should eliminate a lot of the tear out that you get. All right, so it is 12 o'clock on Friday. I don't know how long it's gonna take us to get done, but it doesn't matter because we're delivering tomorrow. We have an 11.30 a.m. delivery time tomorrow and it's about two hours and 15 minutes away. So we, we gotta get moving. Um, today, we, we literally have to, we sand it up to 120 on everything, we water pop, we have to sand 150, put on mineral spirits, let the mineral spirits dry, and then apply Rubio, um, and then do final assembly, and that's it for the box. My only concern right now is, I, I think the box needs legs, and so while the mineral spirits is drying, I'm gonna work on that and do a couple things, so. Way too much to do, not enough time, and yeah.
Before applying Rubio Monaco, you are supposed to use their proprietary blend to wipe down all the pieces, but I find Mineral Spirits works just the same. I don't know who thought making design changes at 8 o'clock at night, the night before a deadline was a good idea, but here we are. This is 6 quarter white ash, and all we're doing is creating a 10 degree bevel. So I'm setting my table saw to 80 degrees, I cut both sides, it creates a, I think it's called a parallelogram, thank you ninth grade geometry. I use the miter saw to put it at 10 degrees, if you don't know, miter saw is already at 90, so you take away 10, that gives you an 80 degree cut. And then we finish with general finishes, water based wood stain in black. I've been working with Rubio Monocoat for a little while now, and here's how I get a good finish. I sand up to 150 grit, water pop, re-sand with 150, apply my mineral spirits, let it dry, use the plastic applicator to spread it around, I rub it in with a white scotch bright pad, I then use a clean scotch bright pad on my orbital sander and go over for multiple passes. After, you get to relive Karate Kid, and it's wipe on, wipe off. I'm in a state of fatigue where I can't even get mad anymore. Yes, that was after we had already cleaned all our pieces and our orbital center just sent dust everywhere. Alright, it is December 23rd. It's 8 o'clock. It's 7.42, really. Um, we gotta do final assembly. Uh, a little tired, a little nervous. We literally just got done doing Rubio Monaco, hence the white glove service. Um, not gonna lie, if something breaks during assembly with these sliding dovetails, uh, I'm probably just gonna cry. Um, yeah, we're we're pretty tired, so we gotta actually I gotta take these off to get the blue tape off, but. Um, yeah, final assembly, build, montage, and uh, yeah, uh, let's go. Boom. World's best soft blow mallet. Good lord. Stop, 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 stop.